Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'ukhiru wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina May yahdillah fala mudillalah wa may yudlil fala hadiyalah wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahduhu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa habibina maulana sayyidina muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluh خير النبي اجتباه وهدى العالمين ارسله ارسله الله بدين الحق ليظهر على دين كل ولو كره الكافرون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا مولانا سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وازواجه وذريته واصحابه والتابعين والتابعين باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد الله اذكركم الله بتقوى الله سبحانه وهو تعالى وذكرهم بقوله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم حيث يقول يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون وذكركم إياي الحفظ القرآن الكريم وسنة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وثانك الله سبحانه وتعالى for another blessing, Alhamdulillah, that He has given us this blessing of life. Alhamdulillah, that He allows us another opportunity to worship Him, to repent to Him, to make good deeds, inshaAllah, that will be heavy on our scales on Yom al Alhamdulillah, we thank Allah for this opportunity of life. Abu Ishaq Ibrahim ibn Adham was born in 100 Hijri. And he died in 165. And he is one of the earliest scholars of the, uh, what we will call Tazkiyah, of the internal sciences. Spiritual pur purification, if you will. Now the interesting story about him is that he was actually the, a king. He was actually a king of what is uh, Balkh, which is uh, modern day Afghanistan. And what he did was he renounced his throne in search for a spiritual kingdom, if you will. And he wanted to live a complete life of simplicity. And he did this by traveling to Syria, where he served bread, making bread. But he became a well-known, uh, as I said, scholar of the internal sciences, so people would come to ask him for advice. And they came to him asking him advice of Ayah 16 from Surah Al Ghafir. They asked him about the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ They asked him about this verse where Allah Taala says, and your Lord says, call on me and I will answer you. And they asked, why are we making this dua? We're praying to Allah Taala, and our prayers are not being answered. And he said to them, I will explain to you in these 10 points. And he said, number one, you know Allah, yet you do not obey Him. Number two, you recite the Qur'an, yet you do not act according to it. Number three, you know shaitan, yet you have agreed with him. Number four, you say you love the Prophet wasallam, yet you have abandoned his sunnah. Number five, you say you love Jannah, yet you do not act to gain it. Number six, you say you fear the fire of hell, yet you do not prevent yourself from it. Number eight, or number seven, it said that you believe that death is true, yet you have not prepared for it. Number eight, you find faults in others, and you do not look at your own faults. And number nine, he said you eat that which Allah has provided for you, but you are not grateful for it. And ten, you bury your dead, 
and you do not take a lesson from it. So this is the advice that he gave when they asked about why supplications are not being answered. I didn't want to read these uh, to, to bring a, a, a hardship and to show that you know, all of these things that we're not doing. The only reason why I want to mention this is for it to be a means for us to reflect. For each and every single one of us to ask, hearing this right now, of where do I fall on this list? We have all kinds of lists at work that we need to take care of and self-assessments and other things such as this that will ensure that we are the, having the most effect, efficient and the most effective application of our skills, that's why we were hired to do what we do. So here's a checklist for us, right, which will enable you to have the ability to call upon Allah SWT, looking at these things and understanding what it is to enhance your relationship and create greater efficiency between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us from those people. Now what I want to talk about here, first we'll just look at this in that the word Rabb is used in the ayah. Allah subhanahu wa says, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ Says your Lord. He didn't say ilah. He didn't say وَقَالَ Allah. He didn't say. He used Rabb. Now the important thing that we should understand here is that the word Rabb, the scholars are saying, is that it, the word in of itself implies mercy. When the word Rabb is used, Rabb uh, uh, al-Asfahani, he says that to use the word Rabb in and of itself, that it implies mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says that it doesn't imply meanings of hardship. And that uh, that that the one uh, who is a murabbi, right, in, 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 in our societies and tradition, the murabbi was normally the teacher, the one, right, who will take you through the stages of development, the one who raises the children, if you will, right? And how is that raising to be done? It's to be done with mercy. It's to be done with mercy. So that's just one of the, a little tafsir of what the scholars say as to why Rabb was used and not another name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically in this verse. And he says that the wisdom of it is that if your relationship with a person is such that you only know them giving you good, you only know hair from this person, then you are going to be more inclined to ask that person for something than someone else. And one of the things that they say here in that, in asking, is that you will uh, understand the generosity of that person. And that's our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to think about that. And think about it is something that I looked at <laughs> and really caught my attention. Now the reason why I was thinking about this is because as a convert, this is Christmas time, and it made me think about all of the things that I would ask for as a convert before I was Muslim around this time of year. So it just made me reflect about this. And it made me reflect and then I got, alhamdulillah, a contemporary scholar who gave a commentary on this verse, which I thought to me was incredible. And that's what I want to share with you. We'll build off of this. So a contemporary scholar was asked the same question. Why do we make dua to Allah and the duas are not answered, not accepted, we could say. The question said that we frequently offer supplications, but they are not accepted. But the verse is general. It states that every supplication is answered. And this is how, alhamdulillah, the shaykh answered the question. He said, to answer is one thing. To accept it is something quite different. Every supplication is answered. However, as for what we ask for being accepted, and exactly what we are seeking being given to us, is dependent on the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I thought to myself, subhanAllah, think about that. 
Al-Hakim, because he uses the word wisdom. Imam Ghazali, in his 99 names commentary, when he gives the commentary of the name of Allah subhanahu wa Al-Hakim, the All-Wise, he says, the one who possesses wisdom, wisdom is the equivalent to knowledge of superior things through the highest modes of knowing. Through the highest modes of knowing. So now for a moment, take that. That you are making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Al-Hakim, the All-Wise, but he's also what? He's Al-Alim the all-knowing. And nothing in creation, no created thing, can be al-alim, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can have an alim, and what they say with the definition of an alim is sabaqahul jahl, that ignorance preceded him, meaning that you didn't know something, you became informed of this thing, you learned this thing, and now you know it, so that makes you alim, it doesn't make you al-alim. Al-alim subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you will understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya'lamu ma kana wa ma yakun wa ma lam yakun law kan subhanahu wa ta'ala can only be Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what was what is what will be and what was not were it to be subhanahu wa ta'ala that's your Lord Allah knows what was not were it to be so when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understand that He subhanahu wa ta'ala, based on this verse, based on the hadith that we have, is answering every single dua that we make. But we have to ask ourselves, are we certain in our, in our own nafs? Are we certain with 100% certainty that every single thing that I ask for is beneficial for me? That's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Think about this. My child is sick. Child is running a fever. Child has upset stomach. Child says, Baba, I want an ice cream sundae. Bananas and whipped cream and chocolate and vanilla and strawberry and all of this. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? You're going to say no. Why? Because you have a knowledge that the child doesn't have that that's going to be detrimental to them, correct or incorrect? So the fact that we would think that every single supplication that we would ask for is something that is beneficial to us, and when it doesn't get manifested that Allah is not answering our dua, is a wrong understanding of our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Hakim, al-Alim, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if that were the case, then also the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah would not make sense. Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah, perhaps it is that you detest something, but it is good for you. And perhaps it is that you love something, and it is detrimental to you. That Allah knows, and you know not. So this is the point that we want to get to. Al-Majid, the one who answers the du'as, one of the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Mujib. The answer of prayers, the one who responds to the request of those who ask by assisting them to the call of those who call upon him by answering them. So in the response to those who are poor, again, Imam Ghazali says that he will fulfill all of their needs. In fact, he blesses before the request and grants the favors before our appeal. But that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. For He knows the needs of the needy before they even ask. We're not informing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of something that we need because we're making dua. He would not be al-alim if that were the case. And if that's what you think you're calling on, then you're not calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're calling on something else. For he knows the needs of the needy before they even ask. Because he already knew them in eternity. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he has arranged the sources sufficient to their needs by creating food and nourishment and by facilitating both of these causes and the means of fulfilling all of these needs. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-present, the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the all-wise, 
the all just, that he responds to all of our supplications, to all of our servants, as he said, and through his presence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his response, he transforms the emptiness that we feel and of loneliness and solitude into familiarity, meaning closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never distances himself from us. It is us that distances ourselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why I say, وَهُوَ أَقْرَبُ لَيْكُمْ مِنْ حَبْلُ الْوَرِيدِ And that's why Rasulullah says in the Quran, that he is more close to you than your jugular vein. If there is absence of the jugular vein, what happens? There is no life. There is no life. And that then brings us to the understanding of faqr, of impoverishment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how they understood it when the scholars would use the term al-faqir. Al-faqir is what? It's the one who understands their impoverishment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what they understand is that by losing connection with al-ghani subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rich if you will, but ghani is what? Ghina in Arabic language to means free of all need. So the one who is free of all need, subhanahu wa ta'ala, also translated as wealth, because if you have no needs, then you are wealthy, <laughs> describes our relationship with him such as this in the Quran, where he says, Ya nas antum fuqara ila Allah, wallahu hamim ghani. That you are, O oh mankind, you are impoverished to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are impoverished to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that impoverishment is what? That if we lose our relationship because of our acts of disobedience, then we have absolutely nothing. Although materially we may look like we have all of these things. But we have nothing. So alhamdulillah <laughs> subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Again, we have to think about this idea, we're talking about dua, <coughs> we're talking about this reality, is that we have to make sure, as I said, that all of these things that we uh, are asking for, that we understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering our duas, but He's answering in a manner and in a time that He subhanahu wa ta'ala sees fit. If you think about this, this idea again that I don't trust myself. I know myself 26 years before my Islam and I know myself now for 22 years after my Islam. I don't trust myself. I don't even believe that I know what is best for me. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does know what's best for me and to that I submit. That's the reality of it. That's the reality of it. Because here, when Allah says in the Quran, that have you not seen the one who has taken as his Lord, as his ilah? Now here's the difference. We talked about Rabb, now we talk about ilah. Ilah is what? Ilah is that thing that you take as ma'bud, that thing which is worshipped has taken that thing, he didn't say here, has taken as his Rabb, he said here as Ilah. So you have to look also linguistically of what's happening here. When the nafs, when the hawa becomes this thing which is constantly, if you would say, uh, 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 worship if you will, fulfilling all of its needs if you will. Have you not seen the one who has taken as his Ilah? His nafs. So think about this. The depth of when the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah in the fi jasadi mudga, ila salaha salaha jasad kullu, wila fasada fasada jasad kullu, Allah wa hiya al When the Prophet ﷺ says that in the body is a morsel of flesh, if it is pure, the entire body is pure. And if it is impure, the entire body is corrupt. Now think about that connected to when the Prophet ﷺ is asked a question about making a decision, and what does he tell one of the companions? He tells them, Istafti qalbik. He says, take a fatwa from your heart. How can I take a fatwa from a heart that is corrupted? How can I take a fatwa from a heart whose ilah is its hawa? 
whose law and that which is ma'bud is a thing of its own desires. Do you see where I'm getting at now? How can we trust ourselves to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the things that we think are good for us if we haven't done the work to purify this heart right here? To even know what is good to ask for us, for ourselves. But yet, we don't want to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you hear people <coughs> saying things such as that. It's as if somehow they're going to get back at Allah because Allah didn't give them what they want, when they want, how they want, where they want. Which sounds like what? It sounds like my five-year-old child right now. That's the nafs. And then somehow if this happens and they don't understand that and process it, somehow they want to get back at Allah, well, I'm just going to stop making dua. Because Allah's not giving me, Allah's not answering my prayers. It's a sad state to be in. It's like drinking poison and hoping it affects the person that you want to harm. That's the reality. So may Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah give us understandings. May Allah make us people that will call upon Him layla nahar. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ حَذَرَ الصَّفْحِ لَكُمْ سَلَمُ مُؤْمِنِينَ يَقُومُ مِنْ صَفْحِ اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ مُفْرُوَ الرَّحِيمِ إن الحمد لله حمد كثير كما أمر وشرنا لا إله إلا الله شر أن سيدنا محمد عبد ورسوله إبعد الله تقبل الله وذكركم بقوله سيد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث يقول في الحديث اتقوا الله حيث ما كنتم وذكركم بشرف مكان مصطفى صلى الله عليه وآله صحبه وسلم حيث يقول في القرآن الكريم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت وصليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم إنك أنت حميد مجيد. So alhamdulillah just in closing here that the death of the body is not the true death. It's only a movement from one, one realm to another. And there are people whose bodies are well nourished and alive, but whose souls are blind, weak, sick, and almost dead. And that Allah says that in the Quran, that it's not the eyes that go blind, but it's the heart. Allah says in the Quran. That it is not their hearts that go, their eyes that go blind, but it's the hearts that go blind. So perhaps we need to look at this reality of where we are and connect it to all aspects of our lives. Of our business practices, our relationships with our spouse, our children, our work ethic, all of these things. And find out if the fatwa, if the fatwas that are coming from our heart are coming from a heart that is pure or if not. And perhaps that is a reason where we can, a place that we can start of whether our affairs are in order or not. Alhamdulillah. This is the, uh, as we said, that this standard of richness is a, uh, and poverty comes from society, but the standard given to us by Allah's Messenger وسلم, is very different because He وسلم, said, richness is not in the quantity of possessions that one has, rather true richness is the richness of one's contentment. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who are content. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people who have Shukru ala al-mawjoodi wa sabru ala al-mafqoodi. That Allah Ta'ala makes us people that have gratitude for everything that is present. And alhamdulillah that we are patient for the things that He has not granted us, perhaps the things that we ask for. So alhamdulillah, I want to just mention here uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu has said in a hadith found in the Muslim of Imam Ahmed that Dua is answered in three ways. Dua is answered in three ways. He said the first one is that what you are asking for is given to you in this world. The second one is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the dua that you made, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ward off some sort of affliction or tribulation or hardship or harm that would come to you. And then the third one is that what you ask for in dunya will be given to you in akhirah. 
And when we read this commentary with our teachers in Damascus, they said that when the human being sees what they asked for manifested in Akhirah, they will wish they never received anything in dunya. Because why? Allah subhanahu wa says in Hadith Qudsi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran Hadith Qudsi that I prepared for my righteous servants, Allah make us from them, Ameen. What no eye has ever seen, which no ear has ever heard, and which has not even come on the understanding or the perception of any of the hearts of my creation. That's what is waiting. So imagine that is the reward. Understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepting, is answering every dua, and it's being accepted. How it's being accepted, that's from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's above all of our pay grades. Regardless of how smart we think we are, and how rational our mind is, and how deserving that we think that we are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous, and that generosity is being poured out to us in ways that we can't even comprehend or understand. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us and inspire us to make dua that we understand his hikmah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us, inspire us to have dua that we are people, alhamdulillah, that will continue to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that he will give us what we are asking for in the way that he sees fit. One of the ways that I think about here in this second uh, 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 category of something being warded off is think about this. I'm leaving my house and I can't find my keys. And I'm asking my wife, have you seen my keys? Have you seen? I put them on the counter right here. I'm sure we know this scenario. I can't find my keys. She reminds me, have you read Surah Al-Duha? We should read Surah Al-Duha for things that we have lost. Alhamdulillah, I read Surah Al-Duha. I check a few other places. Alhamdulillah, I find my keys. And now I leave my house. As I drive down two stop signs, I see that the police are there and there's a flare on the ground and there's an accident where apparently it looks like one car has crossed through a stop sign and broadsided another car. Think for a moment that the delay that you had in not being able to find your keys is your dua being accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that was not your car that was broadsided at that stop sign. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering your du'as, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is accepting your du'as because He promised you that He would, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma rahmi al-mu'mineen wa 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 ونور في قبورنا يا رب العالمين اللهم أكرمنا بتلاء كتابك أنا لا أنا لا وأطراف الدنيا يا رب العالمين اللهم ردنا الدين ردا جميعا يا رب العالمين اللهم كن معنا ولا تكون علينا عبدا يا رب العالمين اللهم نسلك العلا من الجنة اللهم نسلك العلا من الجنة اللهم نسلك العلا من الجنة اللهم نسلك خير ما سلك به سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما سعد به سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم من يريد خير هذه أمة محمد يفهم فقنا كل خير ومن يريد ذلك فخذه أقصى العزيز مقصد يا رب العالمين إنك على كل شيء قدير بحمد الله اللهم أرحم أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم خفف عن أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم فرج عن أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم أطف عن أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم وانصر سيدنا أمة سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم بجاء سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم ردنا لدينك ردا جميلا يا رب العالمين وأخذ عوان الحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله